All right, we need to we need to cut that. Uh... It's First of all, uh, thanks to thanks to Ron for joining and uh, talking. He's been in this for over twenty years. Okay. Uh, Tom versus of uh, solar. There we go. And All right, we, one we, we've coming launched in April eighth, so this talk is very timely. Those of you that are keeping track of solar eclipses, uh, there's one on October, but this is going to be a total one. This one's going to be long, one and a half minutes, and it's going to cross through Mexico, Texas, end up all the way through uh, like a Newfoundland area in yeah. Canada. Um, so mostly just enjoy it. You know, hopefully you're in the right part of the United States and the world cooperates. But if you want to take some photos, uh, um, Rob here is your man. He'll explain all the different ways to do it and not do it. So I know I tried. So thank you so much, Rob. Yeah, not a problem. And uh, it's yours. All right. Okay, well, um, I'm uh, Rob Hawley from the Fremont Peak Observatory Association. Um, I'll reintroduce myself later because one of the things that, that I found is that uh, a lot of folks have forgotten over the years who we are. Um, but this is uh, focusing on something that I've been passionate about, which is going to solar eclipses and particularly photographing them. All right, so in terms of an outline for tonight, I'm going to introduce my, give a more detailed introduction of who I am. And we're going to talk about the challenges of, of photographing eclipses, some strategies to be able to watch the eclipse and still take pictures. We'll talk about the equipment. We'll talk a little bit about uh, things that you should keep in mind on the day of equipment, on uh, the day of the eclipse. And then we'll talk a little bit about the, the upcoming eclipse and where to go. All right, so I've been doing this for a long time. Um, I've seen virtually every eclipse since, since 1999. And as you can see here, literally, I've been all over the world doing this. And these are all the eclipses, although this actually isn't up to date because it doesn't, it doesn't include uh, the last one I saw. All right, and over the years, I've, I've been known as taking some pretty decent pictures. So, um, so with this, like I said, the goal of this talk is to tell, is to uh, teach you how to do that and to still see the eclipse. All right, so why is this hard? First off, there's a tremendous range of brightnesses. Um, your, your camera, uh, to capture all the, the events of the eclipse, your camera is going to have to take pictures as fast as one eight, eight thousandth of a second and as slow as several seconds. And so, Getting all that done is, is, is kind of tricky. The second is, it should be obvious to everyone here, sun moves. And it moves remarkably fast. If, uh, on the video that accompanies this on the FPOA website, I actually do a demo of, of the sun moving in, a, in an eclipse time period. And you can see it marching off the edge of the, edge of the camera. Um, you need to use eye protection up until the point where you can confirm that totality has begun. And second, you'll be pumped with adrenaline. As I describe in the movie, um, if you really want to simulate using your equipment on Eclipse Day, run around the block and then, then try to set up. And that's going to uh, get you to the level of excitement that you'll be at, at totality. All right, so first up, before we go any further, one of the things that has been said on every, every Eclipse trip I've ever been on if this is your first eclipse, watch it. Don't photograph it. So, okay, so you're here listening to me. So I presume that that's, that, that advice doesn't appeal to you. So, um, so let's talk about how to do it successfully. So the way you do it successfully is to use KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. Uh, plan, plan how you make it as part of your plan how you're going to watch the eclipse. Um, that means keeping what you do during the eclipse a minimal and to use automation, practice, and then I impose myself a 10-second rule. What's a 10-second rule? Uh, if something goes wrong, you'll, you'll spend no more than 10 seconds trying to fix it, and then you'll abandon your photography. That's actually happened to me once, once uh, the, the 10 seconds triggered, and I was close to, I was at nine seconds 
a second time. Um, so this is very real. The stuff does go wrong, and uh, um, you need to be able to focus, keep your mind that that the goal here is to look at the eclipse. And definitely do not try to manually operate your camera. Been there, done that. All right, so some alternatives. Um, well, the easiest one is just to take wide angle photos. And those can be really kind of interesting as we'll show you in a minute. The second is to use a tracking mount. A tracking mount solves the problem of chasing the sun. And the third is to automate your exposures and I'll give you some ideas of a couple ways you can do that. All right, so here are three wide angles. Unfortunately, uh, Zoom is, is costing me the one on the right. But uh, um, these are also three different technologies of, uh, of can we stop that somehow? Sure. That's a Zoom setting. That yeah, I know. Change, say, do not. Uh, okay. In any event, um, so these are three different technologies how to do it. Um, the small bar picture is a GoPro. This is with it, just a DSLR uh, with a really wide angle taking photos like once a second. And that's, that's the most recent. That's Australia uh, in, in April of last year with an iPhone. And again, the right yeah, the one on the right that's almost blotted out. Unfortunately, I don't. You can close out with the name. Yeah, I'm. Unfortunately, I I don't have a cursor. <laughs> that was one of the sort of one of those things I should have done before I I launched my slides, just like the starting the recording. Um, and 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 uh, like I said, is is that you don't actually need to watch the video of this. I I've I'm just in the process of updating a half hour long, uh, more detailed version of this talk uh, that's available on the FPOA website. Um, so in any event, um, very important eye protection. As you can see our friend here, he's well equipped uh, and uh, very important that you don't take your eye protection off until you can confirm positively that uh, the eclipse has begun. In other words, you look through your glasses and don't see anything. So, so that's the first time that it's safe to take those glasses off. And don't do it before that. And definitely don't look, well, we'll talk about C3 in a moment. All right, as far as optics, I, I personally prefer to use a TV76 and a DSLR. That's what's going to Texas with me. You need to get a solar filter, as you can see over there. Uh, I also use a Canon 300 millimeter lens. The Canon is a lot, a lot more portable. Um, and it had, and, it, and uh, I warn you, people have tried to use zooms. I've tried to use zooms over the zoom lenses over the years. They don't work well. They just don't focus well for enough, well, well enough for this. So don't try using one of those. Um, manually focus on the, on the sunspots and uh, make sure you turn off autofocus because autofocus will get really tight in knots trying to do this kind of stuff. As far as focal length goes, um, one of the things you need to decide is what problem you're trying to solve. Um, if you want to bring your SCT, every, you know, everyone thinks, well, I'm going to bring my SCT. Well, that's what you get with the SCT. You, you are, you're not going to get Corona. So the two things, the two, uh, uh, and I'll sh I'll, let me show you the uh, examples of the two different kinds of optics that I use. So this is a full frame of the TV 76, one exposure. As you can see, this was an exposure of sort of mid corona. So all the inner corona is completely washed out. And, uh, and the, out, the outermost corona is not exposed enough yet. So it is, this is an example of what I was talking about earlier about the wide range of brightnesses. Now, um, this is compared to this with a, with a, a, a telephoto. So you can see the sun is a lot smaller. You're going to get more of the more of the corona, uh, but but the prominences are also going to be smaller. So, like I said, it's a, it's a trade-off. Now, as far as a camera, um, I like using the Canon 60DA. Um, it the, that that A thing really helps uh, enhance the color of the uh, of the prominences. I have friends who've used other DSLRs. Um, I've tried using a modified camera. 
And, um, but the problem is a modified camera seems to have white balance problems. So if you can sort out the white balance problems, then use one of the Hue Tech cameras. And if not, um, I have, like I said, I have one at home and I never was able to sort out the white balance problem. So it's, it's not taking the trip for me. Now, as far as mounts, uh, I prefer using an Equatorial mount because I don't like chasing the sun. And I've used a bunch of different strategies. Uh, my, my favorite is what used to be called the Orion Skyview Pro, and they, they've, that's way obsolete at this point. But it's a fairly hefty mount, you know, not something you're going to take to Africa with you. Um, in Svalbard, because we were, we were really weight limited, uh, I custom built a mount using an AstroTrack. That that just that that the mount was was custom built to the right the right uh, uh, declination and then I just had the the Astro Track turn the turn it with me. Um, what I've been doing now and what I did in in April of last year is I took an Ioptron and I've used that a couple times. That's a really that's a really wonderful uh, mount. And again, if you go to the movie, uh, I I talk about each of these in great detail. If you are going to use a fixed tripod, then at least you use a geared head. So, and, and preferably a geared head uh, tilted to the right, an right angle so that you only have to do one adjustment to, to track the sun. And I really recommend a soul searcher. Uh, the soul searcher uh, really saved my butt in, in Svalbard because I, the uh, Astro Track wasn't tracking well and uh, when I went to look, when I went to look after totality, there wasn't anything there. So I quick went into the soul searcher and and realized, uh, oh, I got go, I got, I have to adjust the the mount, the tracking a little bit, and then I was good. And that that was my nine seconds out of ten trip. All right. So as far as automation, um, then then you've got a couple choices. You can do scripted exposures or you can do full automation. So what I did in, in Libya uh, is I just, I just created a, a, uh, a set of, of take this picture at this, take this picture now and then wait for you know, some number of seconds then take the next picture. And then, then I very carefully calculated when to start that script uh, based on where, where we were and let it run. And that ran on a PC um, and that software, you know, I, I have not been able to find anything similar to that since then. So I'm not sure that that's even possible. And the other choice is to do use full automation. So again, if, you, if you're doing scripting, then you, you have to very carefully lay out ahead of time exactly um, what photo you want taken at what time for the location you think you're going to be at and pray the Libyan army doesn't move you at the last minute. Um, so as far as computer control, um, the two, the two go-to programs as of 2018, as of 2017, were Solar Eclipse uh, or, or Eclipse Orchestrator if you were on a PC, or Solar Eclipse Maestro if you were on a Mac. The problem is, Solar Eclipse Maestro doesn't work anymore on modern equipment. Um, and so uh, one of my, my COVID project was to write my own. And Capture Eclipse is available for free on the Apple Mac store. Uh, it supports Ventura, uh, Ventura and Sonoma. Now, I didn't update the slide. Uh, it does support Sonoma. Um, um, and it's, it supports native M MX. Uh, it will automate everything for you. Uh, you tell it where you are, um, or you plug, give it, you plug in a GPS unit and it figures it out for itself. Um, and you, you, uh, get the, you make sure that the PC has the correct time and say go. And it does everything for you automatically. Um, now, the one thing that I've caught a lot of flack for is it only supports modern uh, EOS cameras, and Nikon is not supported. And, and I, I've written an almost a, a full screen page of why that is. So if anybody's interested, I'll, I'll give them the URL, and they, you can go see, see why, that, why that is. Uh, but it has a lot of improvements over SEM. 
Uh, it has direct support for focusing. It has GPS, dynamic GPS support so that if you're on a ship moving through the ocean, uh, it'll automatically recalculate when the eclipse times are to, so, you know, as the ship is moving. Um, it'll, uh, I'm, I'm updating it to track changes in the Earth's rotation. That's been a bugaboo of some programs. Uh, and uh, if you don't believe the, the parameterization I have, there's an easy mechanism that you can supply your own. And so uh, anybody who's used Solar Eclipse Maestro will recognize, will recognize it's very simple, except that I've gotten rid of all the fancy stuff, all the non-take-a-picture non stuff that Solar Eclipse Maestro used to do. And this is strictly a, photo, uh, a program to take photographs. Um, and so as you can see, it's pretty, pretty easy status. Uh, it calculates all the, all the event times, and then it, it calculates the script that uh, uh, do, to uh, do your photos, and then you say go up in, the bop, up in the corner up there, which is unfortunately hidden by, the, uh, uh, by, by my face. Now, if you're on a PC, then my understanding is this is the go-to program. I've never used it. But this is my understanding is this is the this is the one you use if you're on a PC. All right, so let's say you don't want to take a computer with you. And there have been a lot of trips where I haven't done that. Uh, my fallback is to is to use bracketing. Uh, and I have this this uh, uh, Canon uh, timer that will every uh, every every programmed uh, number of seconds, it'll it'll snap the shutter and take a picture. And then it relies on the camera to cycle through uh, however many f-stops that that you can program the camera to do. So my own particular one is, it has, allows you three f-stops. There are some I understand allow you five. So uh, you you pick a bunch of exposures. There's there's some examples of of some ones that'll get you a nice range of images. Like I said, I've done this a couple times now, and and I've walked away from some acceptable images. All right, solar filters, very important. Um, I use both glass and film. Um, I don't have a preference. Um, uh, both, both Orion and Kendrick make, make really nice filters. Um, I personally prefer the Kendricks, which is a botter filter, a little bit better, because I like the, I like the color that, that it, it, it displays the sun, makes it easier to find sunspots. Uh, but, if you, but it also makes the color very unnatural. So if you want a natural looking sun, then the Orion is, is, going, to, is going to be a better choice. And Rainbow Symphony is my go-to place for eye protection. All right, so actually this was a lot, this was generating a lot of uh, internet traffic the other day. Oh, we had a whole discussion on, on covering up an eye uh, before totality. Um, and this is the technique that I use, is that, that I use an eye patch. Uh, and this does a couple things. One is if I mess up the, my determination of C2, I now have at least one, work, one working eye that, that, is, that doesn't have a, a sun flare in it for the next five minutes. Um, it dark adapts that eye, and, and I've run the experiment enough to know that that really does work, that, that by dark adapting an eye, I get more detail, I get more visual detail in the corona. Than, than if it's not if I if I just do my you know regular eye, um, and uh, you know you, you look like a dork for for two hours, but it it really does help. All right, so let's talk about eclipse day. All right, um, the eclipse is going to be over. The eclipse is going to be over quickly, and as I said earlier, you're really going to be pumped up, particularly as you get closer to. To totality, you're gonna, people are going to be screaming, um, uh, you know, uh, all over the place, and so some advanced prep will help you reduce the risk. So, in terms of your camera setup, um, manual focus, uh, and at least if you're using one of the automated programs, manual exposures, uh, raw mode definitely. Turn off the camera sleep, uh, and make sure you test the camera's battery life, and have a spare battery. I lost pictures in Zambia because I had a bad I I had a bad battery. 
And you need to, if you're using an automated thing, you need to accurately sync your time. And Capture Eclipse explains in great detail how to do that. And I don't know how Orchestrator does it. All right, so, so on Eclipse Day, um, you should kind of, I would, I would get at the site a couple hours before C1. Uh, particularly if you're going to Texas, those roads there are going to be clogged, just like they were in Oregon uh, and every place else, as I understand. Um, from C1 to C2, um, to C2 minus 15 minutes, um, take an occasional photo, talk to your friends, check the tracking, check the focus, watch your batteries, take a bathroom break. Um, and uh, um, uh, one of our favorite things is to, is, to get, is to get a piece of cardboard and punch a message in it and hold it up and, and you get all these nice, you can get this nice message with a little little uh, crescent suns in it. And that's, that's a cool activity to, to uh, uh, fill in the time. All right, as you're nearing totality, uh, about two minutes before the eclipse, what I do is I replace, uh, I stand in front of the camera and I replace the solar filter actually with one of these because it's a nice black hat. Uh, I actually have one that I take with me that's, that's been all over the world. <laughs> um, and we'll talk about why at that in a minute. Uh, verify that all your equipment is working. Verify, look at where the sun is in the soul searcher, because just in case, because remember, you've, you, you now can no longer look through your camera anymore because you got a hat over your, your camera. Um, and then start noticing the changes in the shadows. You're going to watch the shadows of everything get, start getting very sharp about that point. All right, about 30 seconds before the eclipse, uh, you can check for this phenomenon called shadow bands. Um, now, if you're in Texas, forget it. Don't even bother looking. Wrong angle of the sun. You want a sun angle that's very low. So we had really great shadow bands in Chile because the, the sun was about right there. Um, in, uh, in Svalbard, everyone's yelling shadow bands around me, but, but frankly, I didn't know what to look for, so I never, I never looked. And I've looked in my, image, my images, and I don't see any. Um, but, but when you do see them, it, it's quite spectacular. It looks like waves going across the ground. But it requires a low sun, a low sun angle, so Texas is going to be pretty much up in the sky. So, All right, about 20 seconds before the eclipse, knock your hat off. And that's the first time you can start taking pictures with your camera uh, without a filter. And you'll, you, as, as it gets closer, you'll be able to take a diamond, some diamond ring photos, then Bailey's beads, and then the prominences and, and chromosphere, and then you'll start taking corona pictures. And again, Capture Eclipse will all manage this for you, but, but that's what's going to happen. And remember, until you look and before you look up at the sky with your solar glasses and not see anything, keep your eye protection on. Do not take off your eye protection. All right, during totality, um, I, I, I have frequently used a camera as a telescope, although people say don't do that. Um, um, I, preferably, I use, I use binoculars. Uh, I got a really nice pair of binoculars. Um, but here's some things to keep in mind. Um, and again, this is something you need to have in your head before you start. Um, look at the shape of the corona. I would expect the corona in, in uh, April to be almost circular because we're close to solar max. Um, uh, where are the prominences? Uh, are they prominent? Are, are, they, are they prominent? Oh, sorry, pun. Um, look for magnetic structure, uh, lines coming out of the top of the sun. Remember, the sun is a big bar magnet, and, uh, and uh, uh, you can frequently see, see uh, the force lines coming out of the, the north and south poles. Um, can you see the moon? Look, look up in the sky. Can you see the moon's shadow? In particular, right, bef right before C2. That's another thing to do before C2. Is you should see the moon's shadow coming in. Uh, do a quick look for planets. Uh, people make a big deal about it. You want to look for planets, do it at night. Um, it, it's, it's, it's worth a like this um, and, and about that length of time. But do, do look around and, and if, it's, if it's a short eclipse, 
uh, look around uh, for it. You'll notice it's it's daylight all around you. Um, now that's going to be less true in Texas because it's a longer eclipse, bigger shadow. But in uh, in Australia, where it was a very short eclipse, it was only a little less than one minute. Uh, I mean, you you could easily see it if you saw that photo. You could easily see uh, a totally eclipsed sun up here and then sky that was lit down near the down near where the right uh, where the, uh, right at the top of the roofs with the sky that was being viewed there. And so it was a real small bullseye. And because uh, I, I do audio notes um, um, that that just so that I can remember. And also it's cool because it captures everybody you know, going yeah. Um, and then and then uh, as it's going on, watch for the chromosphere. When you see that red band on one side of the sun, that's the time to stop looking in any magnified optics. Right then, not not an instant later because um, you don't know when, you know, how irregular the surface of the, of the moon is at that point. And the photosphere is going to appear at any time once you see that, uh, that red band. All right, so the good news uh, with exposure is you'll always capture something. I mean, you know, whatever exposure you take, you're gonna capture something. Um, I said F5 and F100 here, Actually, probably six three and one hundred, uh, but but like I said, is is you can always capture something. Um, again, if you go in in the movie, I show I think I show some some examples of various photos. Uh, capture Eclipse has a whole bunch of examples built into it, where where you can go in and see various exposures. This is the kind of picture you'll take. Oh, here we go, right here. So you can see what I mean it is the, the wide variety of, of, of images you get. And, and uh, like I said, each one, think of it, this is almost like an MRI. You're kind of taking a slice through the, through the, through the experience. And, and so this slice up here, I get prominences. This slice down here, I get, I get the moon illuminated by the earth. And processing. Um, uh, your raw pictures will require some processing. Um, I, I, I've done it a bunch of different ways with Canon tools, Apple Preview, um, PixInsight, which you guys should all know about. And as far as uh, building an HDR image, about combining all those disparate images together to get one of these pretty pictures of, that tries to simulate what you actually saw, I've used both PixInsight and Photomax. And I don't have a preference between the two. They both, they both have done a, a decent job that you can see on my website. So HDR is really kind of cool. Uh, I think this is this is 2017 in HDR. And so it, it, it starts to approach it starts to approach uh, a simulation of what you see what you see naked eye. Now where to go? Um, so the two go to uh, sources of reference are Jay Anderson for weather and Espinac and Anderson for, uh, for, what, for um, sort of more detailed stuff about what the, what the circumstances of the eclipse is going to be. All right, so you don't care about that one. All right, so this is one that you care about. All right, so um, this is Jay's forecast for April 8th. Um, and it basically, it basically shows uh, Mexico as being an outstanding site. Texas is being kind of in the middle and getting progressively worse as you head up towards uh, towards Newfoundland. The problem here is that uh, Jay based his analysis on 20 years. Fred Espinac based did an analysis based on five years, and his curve looks very different. Uh, his curve looks flat here. Uh, and then, then actually, a little, actually, as you got up to upstate New York, you actually there were actually a couple of years, a couple of years that did it, and everything up here, uh, it was 100 percent. It was completely lost from from about Arkansas up to upstate New York was just gone every year, and from upstate New York to uh, the Atlantic Ocean was gone every year. So there's climate, and then there's weather. 
So there, there are no guarantees in this one. And, and, and as I joke, uh, April is Dorothy season in Texas. So we might, uh, we might uh, be able to uh, get, get to experience some of the unique Texas local April weather. And hopefully it, hopefully it uh, goes someplace else. So if you don't know, those are, that's twister season in Texas. Um, so plan ahead of time. I mean, I, 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 I see on the inter, on, on Facebook, a whole bunch of people, um, offering sites and events, and we're kind of get, getting into the gouging stage. Somebody was offering a, a, uh, to, to, for somebody for a, a, an unimproved campground with no, with no, uh, facilities and they were charging $500 a night, which, which proceeded to get them, uh, get them quite trashed on, uh, on Facebook. But, uh, um, uh, it, it is starting to get to the point where it, you know, the opportunity, the options are starting to get limited. So I guess just to sum this up, a total eclipse experience is a unique, is total eclipse is a unique experience. Don't miss it by fussing with your camera. I've, I've given you some recipes where you can, you can make using a camera a lot easier. Um, definitely practice your setup. Uh, I suggest uh, a mental checklist of, of things to look at during totality. Um, so you're just not sitting there going deer in the headlights. Um, and uh, remember the 10 second rule. If you are gonna take photos, remember the 10 second rule. You're there to see the eclipse, not to fuss with your camera. If it isn't working, too bad. Okay, no. All right, so let's talk a little bit about who we are since apparently uh, a lot of the communities has, uh, uh, has uh, forgotten who Fremont Peak is. Uh, Fremont Peak is, we don't actually call ourselves an astronomy club. We call ourselves a service organization uh, because what we do is we operate a, a, a facility under contract to the state um, um, to provide public programs. That's, that's all we do. We, we don't have, we have one meeting a year which, by the way, uh, the Star BQ is in August. You guys are all, it's, that's a regional meeting. You guys are all invited. Uh, if you need a formal invitation, I'll spit one off. You can get official message from the treasurer of FPOA. Um, we've been operating for 1980, since 1986, and uh, uh, we provide 20 evening and eight solar programs a year, plus, plus a ton of, uh, of private programs for school groups. Uh, we, we, based on us being up there, we've preserved amateur access to a dark, one of the best dark sky areas in the area, uh, which would otherwise be shut down. Um, and uh, um, so that's who we are. Any questions? <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, you have a question. If you could either give your link or the reference of the Eclipse information or my website. Sure. FPOA.net slash Eclipse. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, there is a longer version of the program. Give me a couple days though, because I went through I went through it this morning and there was a, information that that was outdated. And so um, I am going through and improving the approving the uh, the videos. And so those will be posted probably, I'm hoping to be done by tomorrow night. So don't look at it before Saturday. Yeah, so, uh, um, so, and, and actually I just released a, the, the, uh, I just released, I just released a new version of Capture Eclipse on Tuesday, which is the version that's been updated, updated for this eclipse. So. Uh, new new samples sample scenarios uh, update the Earth rotation a couple of improvements that 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 people suggested after April um, so um, and a new camera driver which I found one bug in it on Sonoma but you if you're running on Sonoma you'll get you'll get a you'll get a warning about don't do this <laughs> we have a question online from Vladimir okay if you want to yes. uh, Hello, very nice presentation. I have a catchy question. Uh, what if you go to observe a total eclipse? Down, down, down. Lower, lower, the, lower, lower the volume, please. Oh. Can you hear me now? 
I can't, I can't do it. I can't control the volume here. It's some magic room, it's some magic room thing. Shall I talk quieter or louder? It's quieter. So my question is, if, if, if you if you went to see the total solar eclipse in uh, Suzhou, China in 2009, and suddenly there is a cloudy sky as it was on that day, what did you do? I got wet. I said, if, if you go on my website, robholly.net, and, and do robholly.net slash garbage, you'll see a picture of me uh, um, uh, in, in China in 2009 in my, in my rain gear and looking very dejected. Thank you for good advice. Uh, now, uh, now, as it turns out, though, um, it wasn't a complete loss because as the as the uh, um, as as totality happened, I uh, changed the weather, and uh, and the cause parted mostly, and uh, we did get to see the corona, um, but that was another case of where I didn't even try the ten second rule. I just you know I put it, everything away to keep it dry and and I uh, didn't want to run in, run in and get the uh, get my camera back out again. Um, there was another case of where we had the opposite. Uh, we started out, and uh, this, this was an eclipse near uh, uh, Pitcairn Island. Um, we started out um, in a beautiful, clear day, and we were just all, all just, you know, this is going to be so perfect and all that. And um, as, as the eclipse uh, approached, you know, the eclipse says eclipse weather, uh, it cooled the sky. And that nice humid tropical air all precipitated out above us. And uh, it was almost completely clouded out. But we had a very good captain. I will give him credit. He found a hole and he yanked the ship over into the hole. And so we saw 20 seconds of the 30 seconds of the eclipse. Um. Well, first, I just want to say I found Capture Eclipse online five days before I flew to Australia for the uh, April 20th eclipse last year, and I was able to get photos uh, with it. So I just have to commend you, Rob, for an awesome piece of software. And uh, in fact, that's how I found out about Fremont Peak Observatory Association, because I contacted on Apple, you know, the app to say, hey, you know, how can I pay for this? And they said, oh, oh, here's my association. And I found, of all the places in the world, this is, of course, just down the road at Fremont Peak. And so first, it's an awesome app. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I followed your advice and bought like a little $10 GPS and plugged it in. And yes, it immediately will sign the app knows exactly where you are, which is awesome. Um, and it knows what time it is, too. Yeah, it knows exactly. And, and, and that, that's exactly actually, that's most of the time, more important. Right, right exactly. Um, and also, just for those of you who are Minter Astronomy Society members like me, Fremont Peak Observatory Association. And I mean, I use this site on Skyline Boulevard all the time. But the one down uh, at Fremont Peak is awesome as well. It's darker sky, a little more of a drive, but it really, really works. Yeah. I, I have a comment. Hello? Yeah, lower, lower your voice. Lower your, lower your voice. We, we, uh, I know. I'm not sure how. Is that any better? Uh, speaking with yeah, we, we can't control the volume in the room. And, and so, yeah, all right. So, let's just proceed at that level of volume. So, one time I went to an eclipse. And you could not see it because of clouds with your eyes. But my telescope actually caught pictures of it and you could see corona and so forth. So sometimes your telescope can see things that your eyes can't even see. Okay. okay. Is your, your app Capture Eclipse on an iPhone as well? Or is it just for download on a Mac or? No, it just works on a Mac and it works on it. It works on on some of the most, it only works on the most recent Macs. Part of that is because um, because of the Canon software. Um, 
Max changed the whole way that devices worked uh, fairly recently. And so uh, that was one of the reasons that Solar Eclipse Maestro isn't being maintained is because he didn't want to rewrite his, his you know, a large portion of his program uh, to, to chase the Mac. And uh, um, so, all right, did, did, I, did, I get your, did I get your question there? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> Oh, film, evil. Uh, I, 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 I have fought with uh, uh, airport security people all over the world to, to preserve my film. I, and, and so when the first digital camera was out, I, I thanked the lucky stars that, that my, my ship had come in. Um, you know, since you're going to be in Texas, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, you, you don't have the same problems because you presumably could drive to the site and not not get your film irradiated, um, but uh, uh, no, I, I, I can't think of one advantage of film. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I think he was first. Yeah, what are shadow bands? Okay, so um, as, remember as I said, they only really occur uh, if the sun angle is low. Think of looking at the bottom of the swimming pool and uh, and, and think of the lines that you see in the bottom of the swimming pool uh, as the water is a little disrupted. Well, the light coming from the sun is coming through lots of atmosphere, all of which has weather. Uh, and uh, every time it goes through it, it's, it's, a, it's essentially another way of, of viewing scenes. You know, the stars, the stars twinkle at night because of scene, and this is seen essentially projected on the ground. Cool. Yeah, it is. I, I, like I said, in, in all the times I've done this, I've only seen it once, but, but, but that once was just spectacular. And one of my friends did manage to capture it in a camera, and um, he allowed me to, to, to take a couple of frames of that. And, and on, on the website for 2019, the 2019 eclipse, I flipped back and forth between a couple things, and you can see the bands moving. It's quite spectacular. Um, okay, yeah, to answer over here. Well, okay, so so what kind of camera? A wide angle or or or? Yeah. Okay, so uh, like I said, I've 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 demonstrated here with a GoPro, uh, with a DSLR, and with an iPhone. I mean, that's a pretty wide variety of cameras, but it's all wide angle. And my program only operates with, with Canon cameras. Um, and that's because I have, to, I have to really have a very close relationship with the camera, uh, is, is I'm not just triggering the shutter. I'm, I'm finding out, you know, what's the camera's battery state? Uh, you know, I want to change the ISO. I want to change the, uh, the, the speed. And I'm doing this, I'm doing this like every, every second or so. And so, um, you know, it, that's, that's why I'm so dependent upon this particular, these particular set of restrictions. And so if you get, you know, uh, all of the Canon cameras, essentially they support, there is a range of, uh, there, there is a range of them, but they generally range, range high. And uh, can't do anything about that. Not my product. Uh, and I will say this, I thought the other day about, what about using a, uh, a one, an astronomical camera? Because an astronomical camera, the, the shutter speeds are fast enough. The problem is that, that for this to work, I rely upon the camera keeping images within itself and then downloading them later. Um, and with an astronomical camera, you have to take an image and then download it right then because uh, it, it, no, it has no memory and it. Most of them don't have any memory internally. Uh, and if you do that, then you know, that just throws everything. Uh, you know, you, 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 can't, you can't do like I do where I take six exposures over C2, uh, you know, to watch the daily fees develop. You just, all that stuff goes out the window. Uh, yeah, actually, you know, he, oh, he, he was, he, I, I, he was. <laughs> um, I think someone in the slide deck mentioned the Alpha, and I thought the same, like, is there any, forgive me, because I'm going to move to the sound question. Are there any interesting structures that you can see by? Uh, the prominences. 
the, the promises. The, that's, that's the main thing is what you want to do is not filter them out because they're one of the more interesting things in the whole, the whole shebang. Okay. Um, and then the question between a conventional camera, uh, the, the Canon produced H-alpha modified camera and a Hutech camera where they, they essentially take the filter out um, is, is the, um, uh, a conventional off-the-shelf camera, it's going to view the, view the promises, they're going to be a little pinkish because it's, gonna, it's going to diminish the H-alpha, the red, and, and therefore emphasize the green and blue lines. And that's going to, that mixed together is going to end up being kind of pinkish. Um, and then with a Hue Tech camera where you get great H alpha, the problem there is, is that really causes the camera to go, ah! and, and it doesn't do white balance. At least I've never been able to get it to do a white balance. Um, um, if, if the ADD that I bought and modified worked better, I probably would spend more time on that. But quite frankly, it, it is very, it was extremely disappointing. It's slower than my 60D. And so I, I use it as a reference case uh, for my testing. And, and that's just, I doubt it will ever, ever leave my office. Yes, you had, um, yeah, did can you? I, I, just say, can I ask you one question, or one comment? Can I ask if you repeat the questions because people cannot hear? Ah, them. sorry. Once you do ask the question. All right, I I will I will try to repeat them then. All right. Um, My question was uh, I had a problem last time with focus, and I've been trying again. Yeah. Already practicing for April. Yeah. Uh, what do you do when it's too bright to focus? Well. One eight thousand. All right. Well, you saw the horror. I, I I got your message, and I was I was promptly horrified, right. and I apologize. Okay. So this is a question of what do you, how do you focus, and uh, the question is is uh, is goes back to uh, the first thing on the documentation of, of of the program is you never point your camera at you never point your camera without a solar filter at uh, at the sun except during the twenty seconds before and after totality. Right. You never ever ever. Even with the solar filter. Right well, no, with a solar filter, you, you should be able to get you should be able to get prominence. You should be able to get uh, focus really easily. What you do is you focus on sunspots. Um, so with capture eclipse, um, what I find is the easiest. Like this is like I said, I, I prefer using botter filters because um, uh, it provides the makes the sunspots very high contrast. Um, I put a tool in there to to invert the image. Which may make them pop out a little bit more, <clears throat> but it works on Orion filters. It works on Thousand Oaks filters, and those those are all my reference filters. Uh, it just looks works in my opinion a little bit better on the bottom. Uh, but yes, you always have to you, you always have to. And this these days, I mean, you know, for uh, for the next coming eclipses, there are going to be sunspots all over the place. You're not that's the least of your worries is finding sunspots. Uh, in 2016, I had one little tiny sunspot, and I'm taking my camera off into the shadow of the ship and trying to trying to zoom in on it and, and find it. And says, you know, God, hope I don't, you know, touch anything and and ruin the focus. So as I carry the thing back and take another shot, so that was one of the problems I wanted to fix. And and people roast me for can for for not doing Nikon. But in my mind, that, that was a low-level Canon feature. And damn, if, if I'm going to write a program, it's going to include that feature in it. <laughs> All right. Any more? I, I'm, yes, sir. How many sunspots did you count in the last eclipse? Uh, all right. So the question is, how many sunspots did I capture in the last eclipse? And I assume you're talking about April not, and not October. Um, I actually honestly don't remember how many groups. There were a lot of groups. Look, look at my pictures on the website. Um, um, and, and, you know, it, it, it was, you know, there, there were a lot of groups. So, like I said, focusing was a piece of cake. But, but the photos that you took, there's some that are really nice, the collages of the photos. Those are all the camera, no icons. Uh, yeah, the ones, the ones. Oops. Yeah, fudge. All right. Well, whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. All the, the, 
the iPhones ones, those are the wide angle ones. Um, you know, you, you, can't, you can't really uh, uh, a, focal, a focal in the clips picture. No, I mean, it's just, no, I just, I, people up at the observatory always stop us and, and spend five minutes fussing to try to get a, a picture of Jupiter through their iPhone and it's just, we kind of just tolerate it, but it's, it's pretty much a waste of time and, and this would be a waste of time times, and plus the clock plus is running. So, where are you? One more question. Um, where am where I going in I Texas? Going? Um, I'm going to a little. Uh, I've been invited to uh, to join a group from the Griffith Observatory in Kerrville, Texas. Um, I've traveled with these guys you know, a couple times before, and so um, um, so it will be it will be interesting. Um, but you meet some interesting folks on these trips. I've I've done at least one trip with El Filipino. Um, there, there is a particular brand uh, if you go wilderness image wilderness travel you, you'll be traveling with you'll be traveling with Alex Filipino. Um, uh, I, I set up next to Rick Feinberg uh, in uh, in Oregon. So so you know it, on some of these trips you, you get um, and in Australia I switched tour companies so I had all these uh, senior astronomers from UK which is the it was a UK tour group and so I had all these senior astronomers. And so that was kind of interesting. Everybody talked funny. I'm proud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was very interesting. So, um, yeah, and then and then uh, I also have a uh, lead in on 26. Um, you know, so um, I'm going to be heading to Spain in 26. That that will be a sunset eclipse. Uh, uh, the uh, C4 is after C4 is after sunset. Uh, and actually, if uh, the latest scenario of capture eclipse, actually, that's one of the simulations is that eclipse. Because it's interesting, because like I said, C4, the sun is set. So the, the and the uh, totality, it'll be like five degrees. Yeah, that's another good, that's a good one for shadow band. Um, I forget what the city is. It's northeast of uh, Madrid. Uh, uh, the question is, where am I going in Texas? A little town called Kerrville, which is about, uh, it looks like it's maybe about an hour, hour and a half outside of, outside of uh, San Antonio. Um, NASA was there in, that was where the Na official NASA site was in, uh, uh, for the October eclipse. That's where they set up the camera that, that they published uh, the images. So, and one of, one of my Griffith Observatory group was there uh, at the eclipse, so I don't know if he had any association with that or not, but it wouldn't shock me if he did. Yes? Well, like I said, I've already, I've already have a reservation on 26. <laughs> and, I'm, and, and, uh, and I'm thinking about 27, um, and I communicated with a guy in Australia about 28. So he's invited me to he's invited me to come to his house because he lives in Sydney and the, and that's in the path of totality. But you know, I, I think I'll probably do a tour group. I wanted to go up to the Kimberley because it's the only part of Australia I haven't seen. All right, twenty seven. Uh, Egypt. Uh, yeah, twenty seven is Egypt. Twenty six is it. Twenty six is uh, is is uh, is Greenland to Spain. And and twenty twenty seven is across the across the north North Africa. So uh, Morocco through to Egypt, and of course the tour groups all want to go to Egypt. Yeah. And you know who knows what the security situation is going to be then. Morocco I've been to twice, and and uh, I feel a whole lot safer be, being around there. So uh, we haven't planned that far ahead yet. So. All right, any more questions? Oh, okay. Well, let's 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 try uh let's try answering another question online then. Okay. Try to speak softly. Um uh maybe you have a visual in the room that we can't see online, but you've mentioned a number of times C2, C3, C4. And I'm not entirely sure what that is. Um, ah, okay. In the introduction to my videos, uh, it defines all those. 
uh, what those are are the various phases. Okay, so this is the question of what is this all the C stuff that I'm talking about. Um, so the way that we talk about uh, the phases of an eclipse, we talk about contacts, which we abbreviate as Cs. So first contact is when the, when the moon first touches the sun. Um, so you, if you look very closely, you'll see kind of a little semicircle um, in one part of the, in one part of the uh, uh, sun's surface. C2, um, nominally, is when totality begins. But C2 and C3 is nominally when it ends. But C2 and C3 are really a process. This is something I talk about in the, in the photography stuff associated with it. Um, there is a period of time when it is transitioning from, from the photosphere being, being fully exposed to the photosphere being completely hidden. Um, and those are called Bailey's beads. Uh, it happens during those times. And so it, that period lasts from, you know, as long as five seconds. And so um, that's why I, I, I say be very careful about, about what you hear from the crowd is, is to, you know, is, you know, because uh, um, C2 is a, is a process, not a, not a point in time. All right, did that, that answer your question? It did, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm happy to answer questions. And, and you know, as I said, I'm, 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 uh, uh, I, I think uh, also, uh, you know, you can email treasure at fpoa.net too. Thank you again. Thank you. Stop share.